Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. I'm Dan. And we are here with the review of the Army Painter Speed Paint Mega Speed Paint Set 2.0 Plus. Yes. 2.0. That's, that's not 2.0. Point, point, that's right? a point, important part. That's the important part. Yeah. Uh, so we did a review on the Speed Paints. So actually, I liked them. I thought they were okay. And then we got the Battletech box from Army Painter that had a couple of Speed Paints in it. We looked at that. This is 50 speed paints. Yes, but 2.0. But 2.0. Yeah. So they, they did, uh, you know, refine the formula yes. so that it doesn't reactivate as much, I think. It doesn't kind of pull away as much. Um, so what I did prior to this video, yeah. believe it or not, uh, I used almost every single one of these colors. <laughs> okay. The only one I didn't use was Orc Skin because that was not only in the, the original Speed Paint, but it was also in the Battletech one, uh, rebranded as like Liao Green, I believe. Okay. Uh, but I did all the other ones. There are, th there's a mind numbing Amount. number of colors. In fact, I don't want to spoil it, but I go so far as to say there may, there may be too many colors, Dan. Too many. Too all many right. colors. Okay. okay. Too many colors. Um, too many cooks. Too many, too many colors in the kitchen, as they say. So we're going to take a look at this. Um, what I did was I grouped all the colors up into like as best as I could into like type colors. Yeah. And I painted mechs three colors. One of them I did four colors because it didn't divide evenly. But I did that. And then I also did some terrain pieces that I recently bought just to see if it would look good on like smoother pieces. Um, so we'll take a look at those. Okay. You haven't seen them yet, so no. this is going to be live. No. Dan's going to he's going to give you his unfiltered opinion <laughs> right here live on camera. I mean, it's going to be filtered, but mildly filtered. <laughs> yeah, you can read his facial expressions if you can like and put it in like half speed uh, and watch him go. <laughs> All right. Anyway, stick around, guys. Speed paint review is coming right up. And we're back. Movie Look at magic. all this. It's like movie, movie magic. Yeah. Uh, so first things first. Yeah. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with speed paints, um, it tells you to prime everything white. However, in speed paint 2.0, it says you can also use a light gray. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, in our initial speed paint 1.0 test, yes. uh, the primer color drastically affected yes. how the paint looked. Yes. Uh, I did nothing in gray. I did everything in white. Okay. I had to use a Rust-Oleum like 2X cover, flat primer, um, and you know, that's it. That's what you get. Um, I think you will get, in my opinion, I think you will get um, more even, like uh, like for the lighter colors, like a yellow, yeah. like they'll come through better on a white. Okay. But for other ones, and we'll talk about this, I think a darker color would actually hide some of the pooling uh, that tends to happen naturally on flatter surfaces and things like that. So okay. I didn't test it. Um, but that's my theory. Okay. This is the, the orc skin. Yeah. Uh, we've seen this so many times. I yes. did not use yes. this color. That was the only one I didn't use. Yeah. Uh, the other one is a speed paint medium. If you want it to flow better. I didn't need it. Okay. Didn't use it. Okay. Um, but this is what we've got, Dan. Okay. So each mech was painted in three colors. Um, I did the arms in one color, the legs on their color, the torso in another one. This guy got four colors because it's the Turkina. So big, so special, so much real estate to paint. <laughs> um, the other cool thing is they have metallic speed paints, which I'll show you. Okay, some neat stuff there. All right, why don't we start with the terrain? Okay, so these are battlefield in a box, uh, like gem crystal things. Yeah, I like right? them. They're now, this is not a review on these things, but I want to tell you they are grossly overpriced and not great quality. Okay. Um, I was expecting them to be like translucent red or something really cool. They're just like, I mean, they look like red plastic from like an 80s toy. Okay. Um, so I had to prime them and I've had to prime them like 42 times because like, I don't know what was up with the, the it material. It's okay. like got some weird yeah. release agent on it or whatever. So I had to like scrub them. So possibly you had to wash them first. You might have to wash them first. And some, uh, some soap. But then I got them primed and I felt good about life. And I was like, you know what, let me try the speed paints on these and just see, you know, and I was going to do like, obviously this bluish purplish, um, this bluish purplish thing. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to spray paint over all of them with a metallic like okay. gold or something simple. Okay. Um, because what you can see is while, while it does give you a really good idea of the color, the, 
it runs right and yeah. on these smooth surfaces it doesn't work as well and it, it highlights literally every imperfection in the model yeah. which there are many yes um but let's talk just about the speed paints in general why don't we start with this color this is beowulf blue dim yep all right i actually really really like this color um it's like a nice rich blue it's got this one actually pulled i think the, oh. the least amount yes yeah and you know it's a battle techie color. You can do Hanson's Rough Riders or you know Steiner unit or yep. really Davian Guard uh, or Brigade of Guard, whatever they are. This one here, Periwinkle Purple. Again, like put that next to the Beowulf blue. It's really, really, yeah. not, really not yeah. significantly different. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the pigment is definitely uh. It's a little yeah. more purpley. Yeah. Uh, but not crazy. So. So. Average person's not going to be able to see the difference there. So, so that's that's a, a periwinkle purple, and it's not really very purple. Um, no, no, it's more blue, blue gray. So these next three, let's look at these next three. Okay, so this is magic blue. Now we the magic blue was in fact in. Ah, it's my favorite. I love yeah, it's blue. a it's yeah. a solid color, and I will yeah. tell you what. The coverage is just amazing on it too. Look at that. Well, ah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share something that with you. one apparently. Well, this one I did in the 1.0 Magic Blue. Okay. This one I did in the 2.0 Magic Blue, uh, and you can see where it pulled away in the 1.0. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Has weird like yeah the, spotting effects. And in the 2.0, it came out better. It it was it's more runny. Yes. Uh, but it was it stuck. It adhered better. Yes. Um, yes, it did. Especially the open flat surfaces. Yeah. Because that one you can obviously tell where the yeah. flat surfaces start yeah. pulling away, but. But again, like Magic Blue to this Royal Robes to this, which is, I believe, Tidal Wave, they're different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Tidal Wave, I, if, if it wasn't for the pigment, like the, the amount of what Magic Blue has, yeah, it would probably look really close to the same. There is definitely a distinctive difference between the two. Like if I had to right. separate it, you would be able to definitely tell there are two different colors. The, the, the Royal Blue, I don't... Right. It just doesn't, I don't know. Doesn't do it for you. Yeah. I don't mind the color, but I will tell you, like, guys, if you're buying, if you go to, like, Aries Games and Minis and you buy an individual paint, um, and you're like, oh, you know, I want to do a blue. Like, any one of these will suffice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you, you can know. make magic blue work if you just use your primer and or your base colors just different. That's you know, it. Like, yeah. And, I mean, that'll just change the overall. Yeah, I could change it too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so that's those three. Now these two are another another similar grouping of colors here. Um, so we've got what Ca Caribbean Ocean or Caribbean, whichever you prefer, Caribbean. and Raging Sea. Ooh. Ooh. So this is almost like the Magic Blue Tidal Wave thing, where like yeah. it's the yeah. same color, just one's a little yeah thicker pigment. thicker yeah in pigment yeah yeah. Is this the one uh, and this is the two No, that this is only a two point color. Okay. Okay. But yeah, they're they're both uh, the raging I, sea. I still like raging sea. I'm yeah, not, I'm not a hater of it. No, it's cool. <clears throat> you know, I, I mean, you could probably use that for like a clan sea fox, clan diamond shark, clan. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, something that you know the the conates, if you will. I think like that, if you're going for like a rustic look, I guess something that's a little bit on the battlefield, got the you know the sun. Uh, oh, like a little worn look. Like, yeah, a little worn look. I mean, the Caribbean Ocean would be mm -hmm. would be a good a good look for it too. Yeah. Uh, so Purple Swarm is the name of this one. Now, this one I think is um, they, they had an, they had older colors. I can't remember what they were called. There was like I can't remember what it was called. It was in the 1.0, but it wasn't this rich. It was much darker. Yeah, and you almost couldn't even you couldn't even tell it was purple. Um, this is much more of like a royal purple. Yes, and while it doesn't look fantastic on the on the gemstones here. Um, my mind immediately went to like if you're painting um, fantasy minis, like a like a purple robe or something like that. Even like, like uh, free lo the free worlds league, yeah, free worlds league. That that would be a perfect purple for it. I yeah, think. agreed. That's definitely, definitely like a Merrick purple. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty cool color. It's good richness. It sort of is in that magic blue and what is the other one? The Caribbean is it the Caribbean? It's, yeah, it's raging, raging sea, raging sea, Arr, raging sea. <laughs> so again, uh, moral of the story is. Lots of similar colors. Um, you know, if you buy the set, will you use them all? I mean, maybe. I mean, if we're you, you know we're nitpicking, but we're American. We love choice. We so love choice. We, we have choice. I guess we have choice. We have choice. No. Um, but if you're looking to save a couple bucks, like I would definitely buy them a la carte, right? And yeah. just get yeah, you know, get the ones you really want. Like if you want an aqua blue, don't buy Raging Sea. You know, and Caribbean Ocean or whatever the heck it's called. You know, just buy unless you have the money. The other. I mean, if you have the money. 
I mean, rock yeah. on. All right, so let's start looking at the max. This is the exciting stuff. That's yes, what, this is, all, that's what we're all here yeah, for. Yeah, nobody cares about the crystals. Henry. This is three different reds, then. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe it. So we've got Poppy Red, we've got Slaughter Red, and you've got Carmine Dragon. Maybe okay. on camera you'll be able to tell, like when it's spinning around, you can tell. But I, I mean, you can see the arms are definitely a slightly so that's darker the pigment. Slaughter Red. That is the darkest red, and we've seen this in the 1.0 speed paints. Um, the Carmine Dragon is pinkish. Very slightly pinkish. That's yeah. on the torso, and yeah. then the poppy red is on the legs. Which you can see as you look at it. You, but if you're, like a uh, right. glancing look, you're you're really not going to be able to see. You're, it. you're not going to be able to see yeah. it. And you know, I'll put it on the close up camera there. Um, you know, to me, slaughter red is a fantastic color. You get decent coverage yes, yeah. with it. Um, it's a nice. It's great for like sort of light or any. And those are the arms, like, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also like the poppy red too. I was less of a fan of the carmine just because it's like. I don't know, it's pinker, and like I'm not really sure. I'm, it's like for Battletech at least. Yeah. I don't know what, what I would do um, in particular with, with that color. Um, all right. Let's move that guy aside here. Hey, get out of here, guy. So here's the trusty old Axeman. What yes. if I told you that was two different yellows, Dan? I would believe that. I yeah. believe that. Yeah. You can tell the one's a little little more mustardy than the other. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the legs as well. So let's talk about the colors. So the legs are a color called Nuclear Sunrise. Nuclear Sunrise. I mean, it should just be called like Rotten Peach, in my opinion. I always um, imagine like a Nuclear Sunrise being like really bright orange. Well, uh, I was thinking green, but I oh. guess that's maybe just because okay. TV has tainted me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of the color. I mean, it's, uh, you, I'll show you in a little bit, like it looks a little fleshy to me. Okay. No, it absolutely um, does. It looks like it's got living legs right now. Right. It yeah. looks like it's got like a tank top <laughs> and the pants. Um, so the two yellows, we had maize yellow and we had ancient honey. So ancient honey in the middle, maize yellow on the outsides, on the arms. Okay. Um, you know, both of them had fairly decent coverage, but I'll tell you the, the ancient honey, you can see there's a lot of pooling. Yes. The darker yeah. pigment was really tough to spread around evenly on that. Um, the maize yellow had very nice coverage and it's the kind of color that I think you could go over with a highlight. I like both the yellows, not a fan of the uh, the legs. Yeah, not that, a fan of the yeah, that's, that's yeah, I wasn't a big fan either. I mean, maybe if you're doing a flat, like if, if it was a human, that, that would work for flesh. Uh, so I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say, make a bold statement. Yeah. Avatar is better than a summoner. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not, but that's not the <laughs> statement I'm going to make. The statement I want to make is I really do think that after doing this with, you know, 49 different colors, I do think these are much better geared for 28 millimeter minis okay. than they are for Battle Max. Okay. All right. That makes, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that they are, you know, the flowing robes I mean, it's, and yeah. armor and this and that. Now there are some colors I think that work very, very well with battle mechs. And I think there's actually some tricks you can do to take advantage of like the weird pooling and things. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but let's move on here. Marauder 2. There he is. That's a variety. So bright red, goddess glow, and dusk red. And that is... Arms, correct. Legs, right. right. Red so. is dusk leg. Goddess glow is the body, and then bright red on the arms. Now, if we bring this guy back and play, like that's distinctly different in yes. terms of a red. Yeah. Like yeah. if I were, if I wanted like a variety of reds, I would buy the slaughter red, and I'd buy bright red. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Bright red's almost orange. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This one should be called Nuclear Sunrise. That's what I think of. <laughs> okay. Like okay. Okay. You know? Goddess glow and dusk red are disappointingly similar. Much like the you know the blues and yes, you know yeah. the ones where it's like almost just like a thicker pigment, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know those are another pair that again, like, do you need both? I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got arms. He looks he's like he arms. looks like he uh, he's wearing like a you know like a muscle shirt. Yeah, like a sleeveless. <laughs> so like, yo, bro. <laughs> oh, but he skips leg day. He does skip leg day. <laughs> All right, so we've got Peachy Flesh, Fire Drake, and Aged High. Now, I want you to look at the bottles. Those colors all look identical. Can you guess which one is super brown just by looking at the bottles? Uh, I'm going to go with the Fire Drake. You think so? I think so. I think the Fire Drake is... Survey says. Well done, Dan. Yay! Well done. <laughs> all right. 
So I can um, tell the I can tell the aged hide is actually like a red. Okay. Okay. It's like the lower. It's like the legs on this one. Okay. Uh, the peachy flesh obviously is the peachy flesh. Now I want to compare the peachy flesh. Yeah, that's really very similar. Yeah, very. Okay. Very. So I'll put that on the close up real quick. Right, peachy flesh and nuclear sunrise. I mean, again, like one's a little more brown. It's a little less pigmenty, but super super close. Okay. Um, I do, I do like the brown, uh, you know, the, the, the fire drake. I yeah. think that's, that's pretty cool. The aged hide was meh. I mean, if you're doing, again, if it's fleshy, age hide probably would work. If you're doing like, um, let's just like throw it out there. You're doing like corn berserkers and you have oh, yeah. pieces of flesh hanging off them or something like that. Okay. You know, I could see that. Like this. Yeah. 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 I oh, see that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Pieces or like, of flesh, uh, yes. night lords, you know, things like that. That's stupid. Yeah. yeah. What was I thinking? But outside, uh, I don't really. I yeah, for a battle tech color, I'm not sure. I, I guess see, I don't know. Yeah, I don't see a need for it. Yeah, I mean it's not. But again, one. We're, we're, I mean yes, we're solely a battle tech mm -hmm. show. But yeah, but you know, channel, we do we but... do other things. I mean we we did just do the review on the Terranify D and D stuff. True. Um. So so, so fantasy it probably would be great. Fantasy, Absolutely. I do I do think it's great. Now these are this is actually came out really good. This Lancelot. Um, the Lance, the last time we did a, the, the demo on the speed paints, the Lancelot got crap colors, but this time I feel like he, he, he made out okay. <laughs> so we have Charming Chartreuse, Algae Ooh. Green, and Gilly Dew. Ooh. Okay. Okay. You want to guess which one's which? Uh, the Gilly Dew is the legs, the Algae is the arms, and the Char <laughs> Charming is the torso. Am I correct? No. no. The torso, the torso is algae green. The charming chartreuse is the uh is the arms. Okay. But I loved all of these colors. Yes, I, um, I do. I like green. Uh, green and orange are pretty much my two favorite colors. Okay. So um, I, before I talk more about these colors, yes. All right. I want to jump right to the dire wolf, which is also a series of greens. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and similarly, we've got. Um, oh my gosh. What's that? The arms and the legs are like completely, it's just pigmentation. That's it. It's yeah. the cons consistency so, of it. Burnt moss, intensity. gunner camo, and then desolate brown. Desolate brown on the top, gunner camo is on the arms, and then burnt moss is on the is on the legs. You really can't tell the difference between the burnt moss and the gunner camo. Well, I agree with you, and I it's it's I mean other than the intensity, that's I mean they're pretty much when it to to the purpose of them pulling into the crevices. <clears throat> It really, I mean, they look the same. Yeah, I agree. Because if you just, if you're just gonna highlight it with something else, I mean, it just mm -hmm. you're gonna highlight it anyway, right? That's right. So if I were gonna buy colors, I would absolutely get this desolate brown. I like yes. this color. Yeah. Now look how splotchy it looks. Yes. And I looked at that and I was like, man, that sucks. And when we painted the direwolf with the other speed paints, the same thing happened because it has a lot of big flat panels on it, um, and that this the speed paints like, what do I do? I don't know where to go. So I thought, what if what if you took a very light gray mm. on top of your white primer and painted camo stripes on this thing? Okay. And then you speed painted it. That would probably work. Make it look nice. You would get like really cool yeah, effects to it. Yeah. Right. And you might even be able to do Dan two different colored, like, you know, like when I do my camo, and this is courtesy <laughs> of camo specs, one of the one of the tutorials, I think, um, B1B Flyer does is he talks about how you do like a thick stripe of one color and then two thin stripes of another color. I think he did was doing like a Jaeger mech or something. Um, but you do something like that, you know, some some pattern like that, and then speed paint on top of it. I wonder if you would get like a really cool effect. Now you'd have to be really careful not to use too dark. Yeah. Otherwise it would almost look black. Uh, maybe you want that though. Maybe like, you know, maybe that would be a really cool effect. But I think you could do with any of these greens. Uh, you could do that that sort of effect. Maybe the chartreuse might look weird. I actually really like this color on its own, if I'm if I'm being honest. Um, but this is another one, this lower one here on the on the Lancelot. I think could and be that, really cool. To me, it should be the uh, what was it again? The, the, this one was the uh, Gilly Do. No, <clears throat> the the nuclear dawn or whatever. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's what I imagine. I, I don't know. I would call it like ectoplasm. That's kind of what it looks like. Remember Ecto Coolers? The yes. little high C yeah. drinks? I was yeah. never allowed to have those because my mom's like, they're going to kill you. <laughs> Maybe she was right. I'm still alive. Um, if you drank Ecto Cooler and are still alive, let me know. 
Leave it in the comments. If you're dead, let us know too. Yeah, We'd let like us know. know. We'd like to know. <laughs> um, so these are these were among some of my favorites. So again, not not a bunch of crap in the box. I yeah. think there's some really really good stuff in the box. Um, I do think there's a lot of redundancy in the box, and I think it's sort of highlighted the way I you know sort of grouped the colors and painted the mechs. And when yeah. it came out, it was like yeesh. Like, yeah. These are really really similar. Here's another guy, another green guy. Um, so this is Shamrock Green, uh, Forest Sprite, uh, and then Ghoul Green. All right, so uh, sh let me think about this. I think the Shamrock Green is the body. It's got that. Yeah, it's the yeah. body. Now, this looks a lot like the Orc skin. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's splotchier, but it's the same color. Uh, the Ghoul Green is on the arms. That is a That is sort of a unique, it's like a flatter green. I would use this green for battle tech on the arms, the ghoul green. Yeah. I think that's like a spring camo type. This is just way too bright. It's yes. like neon. Yeah. It's like nuclear yeah. sunrise. Yes. <laughs> and when... then the legs is forest sprite, um, which again, really like this color, but you could use it for like an Iridani light horse or something along those lines. Or this one's a... this in a desolate. Uh... Yeah. Oh, this one, the yeah, desolate, desolate brown. brown. Yeah. Which isn't brown at all. It's it's, it's not really brown. Yeah. No, it's it like been a desolate green. Desolate green. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll put green. this guy up on the close up. I'll put the, I'm going to lay the Lancelot down so you can kind of see. I mean, it's a little like. From this know. distance, they look almost. Yeah, they look similar. pretty similar, yeah. right? I mean, there's definitely a gradient of colors. Um, even the leg, even the, the leg, you know, there's a continuum yeah. there for yeah. sure. Yeah. I think if I put all those colors on one Mac, you, you, you know, it would probably be more evident. But looking at the bottles, like you can't tell. Yes. Yeah. Um, per se. All right. But I do like all the greens. I, I would be, I would, you know, I would sort of think about looking at these colors. I would think about like which ones you want to buy. You don't need all of them uh, because they are, in my opinion, very redundant. Um, let's jump to, uh, let's jump to this guy. He looks lonely. So this is a lot of browns here. And you can see, Dan, lots of similarities between the arms and the torso. Yeah. So what's weird is the bottles look nothing like at least the, the ruddy fur, the, it looks like it should be very, very red, but it's not. Um, so we have warrior skin, we have ruddy fur, and then we have satchel brown. Satchel brown, obviously, on the, the legs. legs yeah. um, and I'm going to say the ruddy fur is the torso? Correct, and okay. warrior skin is on that. Now, I'm going to pull up the, the timber wolf for reference. <laughs> yeah. Right? So the browns are not that different. The flesh colors are not that different. Nuclear sunrise on this guy, like yeah, it's a little peachier, right? But you can see, like again, like that's not no, it's not, not really a lot that, of difference yeah. there, right? And I'll put this up for our for our <laughs> viewers to take a look at. Um, you know, I I think if you're gonna buy a, a brown, right, and you need like a leather type color, satchel brown is is too it's too saturated for me. I mean, it makes sense if these were highlight paints, but they're not. So like. That's yeah, so you thing, don't like, need all the all the different colors. That's yeah, my point, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, if this is like sort of a one and done, now I don't want five colors, but I think 50 is a little bit over the top. Like, you probably could have got away with 30. Yep. Um, and I'm trying to remember, what was the color over here? Fire Drake, right? Like, uh, or no, Aged Hide was the... The, the No, legs. no, it was Fire Drake. Was it Fire Drake? Yeah, fire, right, because it's so confusing. You think Fire Drake was the red legs, but no, it's actually brown. So the Fire Drake and the Satchel Brown, like, I mean, look at the colors on the bottle. Yeah. They look nothing alike here, Dan. Uh, but they look very, you know, fairly similar. And people are going to yell at me and be like, one's lighter than the other. I know that. I can see it. But uh, I don't think it's different enough to warrant, like, a whole different color. Um... What's next? So I'm going to save some of these because these are sort of in the same family. Let's look at this. This is like browns and tans and things. All right. So this is ochre clay, bony matter, and brownish decay. Ooh, I like okay. brownish decay. Ochre on the arms, brownish decay on the legs, uh, bony matter, that as it were. Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I do know what you mean. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's not even close. Yeah. It's not even close to any of these colors. Yeah. Yeah, Arnie Painter, you've disappointed me. It's it is like the Only on colors. That one, though. The colors on the front are very de are very deceiving. Yes, um, that's why I wanted to you know get them actually on a mini. Now I do like them, and I do like I I like them all. Um, even the bony matter is perfect if you're doing like skeletons or something. Not really a mech color, but really really good for other things. 
Um, but I thought Clan Goliath Scorpion, perfect. This is like the perfect tannish brown. It's not like overwhelmingly brown. Yeah. Um, the arms are neat too, but there is, you know, similar to like the other things, a lot of pooling. So let's go into these, then we'll get to the metallics. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is an Cat. It is an Cat. It's an Cat. We have Occultist Cloak. We have Noble Skin. And we have Grim Black. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Noble Skin is the legs. Yeah, yeah very good. Uh, Grim Black is the arms. Very good. Yeah. And then the last one was what? Occultist Cloak. Occultist Cloak would be the torso. Yeah. You really, I mean, I'd imagine from this distance, you can't really see the difference. Yeah. Between the arms and the chest. There I mean, is... from, from tabletop distance, there's like, I mean, one's black, one's navy blue, but. Yeah, I mean, you can, you, from here and looking at it, you can see there's a, definitely a pigment uh, difference, but yeah. it just, it's not enough. So the noble. It's so dark. It's so dark. The noble skin has potential mm. as like a charcoal uh, like a mech, like a charcoal mech color. I think yeah. if you hit it with some metallics and things like that, you could really bring it to life. Um, the blue, there was a, there was a blue in the original one. I don't remember what the name was. I want to say it was like storm cloud blue or something along those lines. I don't remember. Um, it was actually, I think a better color. Okay. Um, you know, than than the occultist cloak. And I, I mean, I think they're supposed to be different, but, um, it's weird because some of the colors directly overlap, like yeah. the slaughter red or whatever. That's like same name, same everything. Other ones, there's like a different name, but it's like kind of a similar color. So I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, none of these colors really blew me away on the note cap. I yeah. will say the grim black looks a hell of a lot better. Do you remember how streaky it was yeah. in 1.0? Yeah. You have a much, much better, like if I was a dude painting black Templars or something, like I'd be super excited about this color. Um, or even like if you're doing, um, you know, Calhounds or any of these things, or there's a lot of, you know, um, mechs, a lot of units that paint the mechs black. Um, so you could do that. The other thing I will say uh, that I really appreciated is it was very easy to cut. Like I, I stopped painting like at the joints. I didn't paint over anything. I didn't okay. touch nothing up. Okay. Like as long as you're not holding it in a weird way to let it run, like if you just kind of are very careful, like it'll stay put. Okay, so it, Which doesn't, I, it doesn't blend in. Like, yeah, so you okay. could do like slaughter red and, and the and the black, and you just have to let it dry first because otherwise it'll pull across if you touch. But um, and if you do mess up, you just paint it with like a primer white or any just any white color that's similar to the primer that you used, and you can go on your way. Um, so that that was definitely beneficial. You know, I will say again, thickness is better, coverage overall is better. My only real complaint is like, you know, they advertised fifty two paints, but there's again, there's really like thirty. Because there's so many that look alike. Yeah. Now, these were very cool. We didn't do this guy. Oh. Sorry, B. <laughs> this, guy was, this guy was boring. Okay. Um, okay. He had one good color. Check that out. All right. Which color do you think I like the best? Uh, Battleship Gray, Ashen Stone, and Tyrian Navy. I think the Tyrian Navy. I'm not hating the, uh, the torso. Yeah, that's the Battleship Gray. If you're, going for, if you're going for a white, so you would basically use this and then highlight... All the flat areas, you know, repaint. Oh, like, like a yeah. panel highlight? Yeah. I think that would really, really be a really good, uh, like a grayish white, like a, yeah. like a cold, cold steel white. I actually like the arms too for uh, your run of the mill militia mech. Like I want to paint every urban mech in that color. Okay. You All know? right. That's disappointing. It's okay. just sort of like a, just like a very bland, uh, that's kind of what I think of. Okay. When I see that gray. Okay. You know? All right. Can we get to the metallics? We can, let's do the metallics. I want to start with this guy. First. This is my this is my least favorite of the two. Oh wow! Okay. So I did this guy. This is a Hunchback Two C. I did him in the uh, Talos Bronze and the Hoplite Gold. Okay. Okay. So it feels the, like it should be heavy. Like it's made of metal. Like it's made it's of metal. Not. Like you could make little like mech trophies out of them. Yeah. So I should have did the crystals in that in that gold. Okay. Like that would have, I think, looked Ooh, and pretty cool. And it hit it with like a varnish, like a yeah, gloss like a varnish, varnish after varnish. Yeah. yeah. That would have been cool. I do have a metallic gold that I used in the little tiny ones that I have, and I'm just going to match it. Okay. Okay. But uh, that would have looked a lot better. So, again, I don't know if you're going to paint your mechs gold. Yeah. I love gold. <laughs> like it's like a pirate force run by a uh, uh, gold member. Yeah. Uh, so I don't I don't know if you would use that in, in Battletech land, um, but it is a pretty decent color. 
The bronze was a little disappointing on the top half. It wasn't like rich enough for me. I wondered if I primed it in gray, it would have came out better. Okay. Okay. But I just don't see like it when seems I like in the areas where it's pulling. Yeah. Like in in the it doesn't like recess enough. Yeah. Right. It looks like it start pulling itself away. Yeah. Or at least some of the crystal fragments that are I guess are in there. Yeah, a little metallic. Or are, are making it look like it's white in the. In the crevices. In the crevasses. Yeah, the crevices. Um, so, right, and when I use, like, my cheapy, you know, um, art store $2 bottle of, like, metallic bronze paint, you yeah. get the depth anyway because it's, like, sparkly and, like, you know, the light catches it different ways. So I wasn't blown away with the, with I, the bronze. I don't know if there's a, a necessity for metallic speed paints. Yeah. I don't know if that's a thing. Well, I'm going to show you. That I, I, didn't, I thought the same thing. Uh, and this guy, I'll put him in the close so people can, can check it out. Uh, that guy sort of was like not super impressive, but I really, really liked this one. Okay. So this is the uh, Broadsword Silver. Okay. All right. And it's, it's almost like not metallic, right? Yeah. It's like not super shiny. Like if I painted something in like, you know, plate mail, you know, silver or whatever the hell the colors are called, like it's yeah. very bright. It's like, whoa, that's silver. Yeah. This has sort of a very like, and it's not even gunmetal. I don't want to call it gunmetal either because, it's, again, it's not as sparkly. It almost looks like natural metal. But I did really like this color, um, if I'm being honest, because unlike the, the what you noticed in the uh, the copper one, like this, in the recesses, it is, in fact, darker. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I thought it did a really nice job. I'll put this one up here, too. So that is the review of all of these speed paints. You know what? We didn't even talk about this guy. No, we, we didn't. talk about him now. Yeah. So let's talk about the purples. Sorry about that. Um, so the Turquina. <laughs> so we have Moonlight Coral. We have Familiar Pink. We have Murder Scene, and uh, Moody Mauve. Why? <laughs> Why is there purple called Murder Scene? Uh, so the the legs are Murder Scene. <laughs> okay. All right. They're All right. a little redder, I guess. Yeah. It looks um, like it, it definitely pulled a lot more on the flat surfaces. Yes. Uh, it definitely did not spread out as as well. Yeah. I had a lot of trouble with uh, with the Moody Mauve, which is the, the body. Okay. Um, yeah, you can definitely see that. It's like really pulled away. And it, I think this is the same color as the one that came in the, the 1.0 set, whatever that was called. Okay. Um, and if you hold it up to this thing, like they are very different shades of purple. Yeah. Um, I'll put I'll put it on the, the yeah. close up here real quick. Like, you know, you can see they are they are different. Um, but then up on the, you know, on the, the terrace, I, I did this Moonlight Coral that was okay. And then the Familiar Pink was actually a decent color in terms of coverage. But again, like, what would you use pink for? Yeah, I don't know of any. I mean, I, there is that Marrick Militia that had, that they're like purple, but it's kind of pink. Okay. Like that might. Maybe. Maybe. But. So what do you think overall? Honestly, everything I've seen, it's speed paints and or contrast paints or express paints, whatever you... It, it takes like one part of the painting process or two parts of the painting process, yeah. makes it into one, which maybe cuts out like 20 minutes of your painting period. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to actually doing like the in-depth stuff or like you're doing your hero or your king or the guy that you want to spend three hours, four hours, 15 hours, three days painting. Three months. It's not going to change. Right. Like you're still going to spend all that time. And you're not going to use speed paints for that. No. Speed paints are for like people like us where we're just like, we need to get paint on right, our right. I need a sort of light regimen. Right. Um, and I'll be honest with you. So I did the um, Glam Barrack. Right? Yeah. We just did a battle report on that. Yeah. And they were uh, the Zealot Yellow Fire Giant Orange. I did the top half, I think, in the yellow. Or no, bottom half in the yellow, top half in the orange. Right. But I had to do extensive cleanup like yeah. extensive to get them look looking like remotely decent um i had a lot of like run from like the top to the bottom and like i had to clean that up i used demon yellow and there was another color i think lava orange maybe i don't remember what the hell it was called had some fancy name yet. okay uh but i did i did a lot of cleanup on on the models and you still have to like paint the vents and you know do all this stuff and like the heat sinks and the guns and so it saves you some time with that initial yeah. push, yeah, but not like, not like an exorbitant amount. Um, and also, again, like the more colors I have, the more trouble I'm going to have matching it to an existing paint. Yeah. 
So, yeah. I'm not hating on it. I have speed paints. I use speed paints. Right. But I don't know if you need this much variety. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the new formula. I think a new formula with, like, the original 10 or whatever it was, plus maybe a few more, would have yeah. been fine. Yeah. Would have been fine. Yeah. I don't need all the variation. Yeah. You know, that's me, though. What and, do you guys think? And the metallics. I don't, I don't, in my head, I just don't see a point to have it in metallics. Yeah, I think that's gimmicky. <laughs> Honestly, I do. I don't know if contrast paints and or express paints has it, but uh, yeah. it's just... That's Vallejo, by the way. Does, does the Express. The Express, right. Yeah. yeah, I've not used those. I've used Contrast, um, and I've used the Speed Paints. I've not used the, the, the Vallejo ones. I've heard good things about it, but I also heard bad things about them, so. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Like, that's another great thing to yes. tell us. Tell us. You know, from your experience, the Express Paints, the Speed Paints, uh, the Contrast Paints, which ones do you like better? You know, and also consider, like, these are way cheaper than the Contrast Paints, too. Yes. Which is, a you know, which is an important thing. Um, and, you know, and I think you sort of hit on it, like the use case is very, very important. Yes. Right. If I want to crank out a regiment of, uh, you know, Tamar Jaegers or whatever that have like a crazy, you know, paint scheme and checkered arm decal, like I'm not going to use speed paints. Yeah. If I want to do Iridani Light Horse, which are like this color and only that color, like, yes, please. <laughs> like, I'll just slap <laughs> that on there. I'll do some cleanup. I'll do a little paint the actuators and yeah. the gun barrels. And then, wow, I've got 12 max and I did it in, you know, a couple nights. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I do think there are, there are specific use cases where they, where they shine. Um, and I, and I still stick by my original statement. I think 28 millimeter, like fantasy type, or even I mean, sci-fi, whatever. I think like with the flowing robes and like armor and like, I think that's really where these things will shine. Yeah, I got, I agree with you. You know, that's yeah. what I think. So, um, you know, every every little elf could have a different color green cloak. Yeah, and then the leprechaun can be shamrock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Uh, um, Dan, any any closing thoughts? Uh, no, I pretty much gave them all. Okay, yeah. me too. Me too. So, guys, interested to know what you think. Um, you know, I wasn't blown away. The first time we opened up the speed paints of the original 1.0 set, I was very excited about it. Um, I still love them in concept. I think these are still great. I just think the set is like, I think the number of colors is a little bit absurd. And the yeah. fact that there's even more that came out after this was released is like, what more can you do? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. So, but let us know what you think. Hope you found this useful. And it, at the very least, you know, as you're looking at the mech spinning around, you know, you know what, what it's going to look like on the model. Because yeah, looking at the yeah. bottle half the time, you can't tell. Yeah, um, especially, so maybe that'll at least help especially you with they that. lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> you lied! Which one was the one that was like way off? Uh, with That was over here, right? The, the brown, brownish decay and the yeah, ochre clay. That's God help us. Anyway. Completely. Um, maybe they just put the wrong... The wrong label on it. Yeah, the wrong Who label on it. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe, maybe the machine was working backwards that day. Working backwards that day. You yeah. never know. Uh, but that said, uh, if you do want these speed paints, head on over to Aries Games. And Aries. Um, he does sell the, the all the different size kits, the brushes, but also he does sell the individuals, which yeah. is, I think, yeah. where you are going to get the most bang for your buck. Honestly, you know? I that's where I purchased mine. Uh, I've tried Amazon uh, to get an individual, but it is like off and on. Because well, you, you, you pay a fortune for shipping. And or I try like miniature market, but sometimes they're just out. They just don't have. Yeah. And so yeah. to me, I'm just like, it, Aries always has what yeah. I need. Yeah, Derek's got all the stuff. Um, so And and he's also very responsive and usually has a good line on when stuff is or is not coming in. So definitely check him out. Um, also, Terrainify, yeah. uh, great partner uh, of ours. Um, they, they, you know, they got a lot of stuff here on the channel from Terrainify. Uh, we recently did a review on on their uh, their dungeon tiles. Yeah. Tom and I looked at those. I showed you, but they're very very cool. So definitely check those guys out. Uh, Terrainify.com. Uh, and lastly, if you want to help out the channel, you can head on over to Patreon. Uh, and before you do that, though, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and. Uh, I'm definitely interested in your opinion, so leave those comments. Uh, let us know what you think about all of this craziness here uh, in front of us. Uh, but that said, Dan, yes. I got nothing else. I mean, more patrons means more things we can do like this. So <sighs> That's right, because this stuff is not, it's not free. No, $279 it's not. <laughs> uh, for the, big, uh, for the bigger now stuff. Now, we're not big enough yet for them to give us free stuff. Yeah, yeah. And our, well, they're not going to. So the Army Painter's never sending us free stuff after this review. They're like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, like, different colors. Listen. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like them. I just said they look a lot alike. 
Um, but anyway, jokes aside, uh, we hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.